Good afternoon, everyone. We are the first group to present the definition and principles of purposive communication. Purposive communication. According to CHED Memorandum Order Number 20 Series of 2013, Purposive communication is about writing, speaking, and presenting to different audiences and for various purposes. Students will be able to determine academic text, present their ideas persuasively, and write academic papers using appropriate tone style and reference style for various academic and professional purposes. It will also develop the student's communicative competence and enhance the cultural and intercultural awareness. They will learn to adopt cultural and intercultural sensitivity in communication of ideas, appreciate varieties of spoken and written English, and appreciate the impact of communication to different societies. Purposive communication also equips students with tools for critical evaluation of a variety of texts and focuses on the power of language and the impact of images to emphasize the importance of conveying messages responsibly. Meaning that the knowledge, skills, and insights that the students gain from this course may be used in their other academic endeavors as they compose and produce relevant oral, written, and audiovisual output for various purposes. Here are the following principles of communication to make it more effective. Number one is principle of clarity. The idea or message to be communicated should be clearly spelt out. It should be worded in such a way that the receiver understands the same thing which the sender wants to convey. In short, there should be no ambiguity in the message. Number two, principle of attention. In order to make communication effective, the receiver's attention should be drawn towards the message. Subordinates should act similarly as per the contents of the message. Just for example, if a superior is very punctual in coming to the office, then subordinates will also develop such habits. Principles of feedback. Receivers are not just passive absorbers of messages, they receive the message and respond to them. Feedback is about listening actively, taking the time to analyze, and then thinking of the best possible solution to perform better. It provides positive criticism and allows to see what everyone can change to improve their focus and results. It brings people together and creates a healthy communication flow. Principles of Informality Formal communication is generally used for transmitting messages and other information. Sometimes formal communication may not achieve the desired result of the communication, so instead informal communication may prove effective in such situations. Example. Management should use informal communication for assessing the reaction of employees towards various policies. Senior management may informally convey certain decisions to the employees for getting their feedback. Number 5. Principle of Consistency This principle states that communication should always be consistent with the policies, plans, programs, and objectives of the organization, and not in conflict with them. If the messages and communications are in conflict with the policies and programs, then there will be confusion in the minds of subordinates or other people and they may not implement them properly, as a, such a situation where the situation would be detrimental to the interests of the organization. Number 6. Principle of Timeliness This principle states that communication should, should be done at proper time so that it helps in implementing the plans. Any delay within the communication may not serve any purpose, rather Decisions become of historical importance only. Number 7. Principle of Adequacy The information communicated should be adequate and complete in all respects. Inadequate information may delay action and create confusion. Inadequate information also affects efficiency of the receiver, so adequate information is essential for taking proper decisions and making actions.